Welcome to episode nine of the Anxiety Club podcast. I'm your host, Tori Levine. On today's episode, I will be talking to Dr. Nazanin Silver, psychiatrist at UPMC Pinnacle's Women's Behavioral Health. You'll get to learn all about perinatal mood disorders. Some of the things Dr. Silver and I chat about are shocking. We discuss the statistics of women with perinatal mood disorder, as well as that 20% of maternal mortality is because of suicide. That is just shocking. And you and I, we can all help lower that number by sharing our stories and talking about our own experiences postpartum. Welcome to the Anxiety Club podcast. I'm your host, Tori Levine. As a former mental health worker with degrees in psychology and criminal justice, I know the importance of keeping calm in difficult situations. But when I had my kids, I found myself full of anxiety, constantly questioning if I was doing things right or how I was messing up my kids now. One day, everything clicked, and I made a commitment to own my anxiety so it doesn't own me. And that's why I started the Anxiety Club podcast. Each week, we'll discuss all things motherhood. So join me, and let's get rid of this anxiety together. Hello and welcome. I'm Tori Levine. And before we get started, I just want to say thank you for listening. If I reference anything in the episode, most likely you'll be able to find it noted below in the show notes. So if you're driving, rocking a baby to sleep, making dinner, any of the above, um, you don't have to worry about taking notes. So you'll just be able to find the links below. Also, a little reminder to make sure you hit the subscribe button in your podcast app. That way your busy mom brain doesn't have to remember when the next episode comes out. They come out every Thursday, but you'll just get it downloaded right to your phone because a lot of times as a mom, we don't know what day it is. <laughs> so let the podcast appearing on your phone be your reminder that it is Thursday. And while you're at it, if you are a fan of the Anxiety Club podcast, please write a review and rate the podcast on Apple Podcasts and share it with a new mom friend. Uh, this is a great way to help the podcast get in front of the eyes of other new moms. And I like to give little shout outs and thank yous personally to those who write reviews. I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for the overwhelmingly wonderful reception of the last episode that was published, episode eight, that was the interview with Katie Walters about crippling anxiety to confidently mothering two under two. Uh, there has been a great response to this, but the hard thing about podcasting is I don't know who has shared the episode with friends or other new moms. So if you've shared, please reach out to me on social media or send me an email at hello at momxietyclub.com because I'd like to thank you personally. It is a dream and honor of mine to be able to share my story as well as the story of other moms in order to help you know that you are not alone with your feelings of anxiety, isolation, and worries in new motherhood and motherhood in general. So again, I want to say thank you. So as I mentioned before, I will be chatting today with Dr. Nazanin Silver from the UPMC Pinnacle Women's Behavioral Health Office. Dr. Silver is an expert in women's health care. She is trained in both psychiatry and obstetrics and gynecology. She helped launch and co-leads the Division of Women's Behavioral Health to address the emotional, behavioral, and cognitive disorders faced by women as they progress through the continuum of their reproductive life cycles. She also serves on the Pennsylvania Maternal Mortality Review Committee, a state committee tasked with developing recommendations to prevent maternal deaths, Pennsylvania's COVID-19 Health Equity Task Force, and many more. 
After over six years of clinical practice devoted to the medical and surgical care of women with pelvic floor prolapse and complex pelvic conditions, she entered the psychiatry residency at Thomas Jefferson University's Sydney Kimmel Medical College, where she graduated in 2018. Now, that is a whole lot of background on Dr. Silver, and I think what she did, as well as she's actually in the practice with her husband, Dr. Silver, uh, who you may have heard me talk about with my last guest, Katie Walters, in episode eight. What they did and what they formed with UPMC in Pinnacle and their specialized women's behavioral health office is incredible, and it is... I am so lucky, as well as you could hear from my chat last week with Katie, uh, that they, we are in the same community as them because it is such an amazing service. They have a detailed understanding of hormones, reproductive health, and how that ties in to our mental health. And I want to mention the link to UPMC Pinnacle Women's Behavioral Health Specialist is down below in the show notes. So if you are in the central Pennsylvania area, definitely give them a look if you feel like you are needing some help. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome Dr. Nazanin Silver. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you, Tori. I'm, I'm happy to be here. Uh, Well, I just want to dive right in because this is kind of the central theme of the Momsiety podcast is really discussing perinatal mood disorders. So could you let us know, let the listeners know kind of a little bit about yourself, why you found it was so important to go from a specialty as a gynecologist, obstetrician gynecologist into focusing on psychiatry? Sure. So women's health has always been a passion of mine in general. And uh, when I first uh, came out of medical school, um, I wanted to do a combination of surgery and women's health. Hence, uh, obstetrics and gynecology was the perfect fit. Um, Subsequent to that, I further subspecialized in um, a field called urogynecology. And that's essentially reconstructive pelvic surgery on women with prolapse and incontinence practiced um, urogyne for about six plus years. And and through that venue, through that practice, um, I encountered a lot of women that had a lot of mental health um, issues. And although I was not treating their mental health, um, I was treating their, you know, incontinence and prolapse, and I was their surgeon, um, they opened up to me frequently about their mental health. And hence, it really got me interested in Um, doing more research as to why some of these women are presenting with depression and anxiety related to some of their pelvic pain. Um, One thing led to another, and it expanded a whole new world of uh, uh, psychiatry to me. Um, And I decided, well, you know, I I really want to go further into um, learning about this. And hence, I decided to leave my surgical practice, went into psychiatric um, training, did a residency, but uh, with a focus on women's behavioral health. So I only treat women and not all women, women with mood and anxiety disorders related to the reproductive life cycle. So it's very specific. So mood and anxiety disorders related to menstruation, pregnancy, postpartum, um, infertility, pregnancy loss, and perimenopause. Um, I also see a small group of uh, women who have mood and anxiety disorders related to prolapse or incontinence, but that's not as prevalent. The predominant percentage of our practice, I would say 50% or more, are pregnant patients and postpartum patients. That you just brought up, and I, I when I was reading through some information about you, I had not realized that you had specialized in pelvic floor prolapse, uh, because that is another... Uh, passion of mine is what started with Babies at the Bar was really helping women learn about how to safely start exercising again. And I will be having a local pelvic floor physical therapist on to discuss kind of what you treated with how that could lead to anxiety and depression and how those things intermix. Can you define what perinatal mood disorders are for the listeners if they're not sure? sure? I know a lot of people just know postpartum depression, but there's more to it. 
Right. So, um, so the perinatal period, uh, the definition uh, varies depending on what resource you read, but essentially it's from when you get pregnant. So let's say the moment of conception and implantation up until a year postpartum. And sometimes depending on, again, what source you read, it can be up to um, two years postpartum. But for the sake of today's show, let's just say from the moment you get pregnant all the way to one year after you deliver. Okay. Um, that's the definition of perinatal. So perinatal mood and anxiety disorders are exactly what it sounds like. Mood disorders are things um, that affect your affect, your behavior, your thinking, things like depression, um, bipolar disorder. And then anxiety are a separate set of disorders that can also um, impact pregnancy and postpartum. So that's kind of what that means in a nutshell. Okay. Thank you for defining that. Uh, because I think it's very important for women to know that there can they can have these mood disorders and anxiety during pregnancy. Because yes. for a while, I want to say up until like four or five years ago, a lot of the focus was postpartum. And now people are realizing and seeing and being vocal about the ability for those things to happen in pregnancy as well. So yes. you don't have to wait until you've yeah. had your child if you're not feeling the same, if you're feeling anxious or depressed or anything. Yeah. And so let me elaborate on that a little bit more so people get, uh, I think education is really important. Um, pregnancy itself puts a woman in a vulnerable state. Whether you come with risk factors of mood and anxiety disorders before your pregnancy um, or not, it, when you're pregnant, you're at a vulnerable state. Now, the um, estrogen affects immune function. And we know when we're pregnant, it's estrogen and progesterone, the hormones of pregnancy both increase. Um, immune function impacts brain function. Um, so when you, uh, when you have elevated hormones, specifically our, a hormone called allopregnilolone, um, that gets really elevated in your third trimester. And then postpartum, it just plummets. It declines significantly. So that impacts mood. And I'm not going to go into the specifics of the you know, pathophysiology, the pharmacology of it, but essentially... Um, the third trimester and postpartum are the highest vulnerable states. Not to say that the first and the second trimester and the rest of postpartum um, are not uh, vulnerable states. They are. However, the third trimester and, in, and immediately postpartum are the high risk vulnerable, um, vulnerable states for mood and anxiety disorders. And um, I think it's important to understand what that means. So, for example, mood disorders such as depression, depression and anxiety are pretty prevalent in pregnancy and postpartum. So what does it mean to be depressed? Oftentimes I have patients come to me and say, well, you know, I don't think I'm depressed because I'm not, I'm not just laying around doing nothing. That's not the only de definition of depression. Um, depression has different degrees. It can be mild, moderate, or severe. Um, what essentially it means is low mood, sadness, cheerfulness, um, feelings of guilt, um, poor concentration, inability to sleep or sleeping too much, not wanting to eat or eating too much, um, and essentially a lot of irritability. Um, and some patients have suicidal thoughts. Uh, you know, it, it, the lack of motivation, lack of desire. It doesn't have to be to the point where you're not getting out of bed. Rather, you notice that these things have changed for you and it's impacting your daily function. Um, the desire to do things isn't there. It may not be severe, but it's still not there. When we get to severe depression, which is what we want to prevent, then the, the person um, really demonstrates things like just not wanting to be bothered with anything, being unmotivated. It starts to impact hygiene. Um, you know, daily personal care, and then you can get severe depression with psychosis um, if left untreated, where the person becomes psychotic and it's a disease. Um, and, you know, reality is not 
what they think it is. And then there's the vegetative state, which is really an awful state to be in where you really, a person is literally unable to talk or move. Um, and their response rate is you, you can talk to them and it takes them a couple of minutes to respond to you. So we want to prevent getting to those states. And that's why it's important to recognize the signs and symptoms and come in early um, to get help. Uh, in the postpartum period, um, because you have a new child, because your family's adjusting, uh, you know, postpartum is made to be very a very glorious time period. And yes, you have a beautiful new family, but the fact of the matter is there's a lot of change in your body, both emotionally and physically, and it is not that glorious. You have lack of sleep. You know, you are just generally anxious about having a newborn. If you choose to breastfeed or not breastfeed, you still have to get up to feed the baby. Do you have a supportive partner? Do you have a support system? So all of those things, plus the physiologic change, puts you at risk for mood and anxiety disorders. Um, and one thing I want the listeners to know is that postpartum depression is the number one complication of childbirth. It is not hemorrhage. It is not pulmonary embolus. It is not um, diabetes. It is postpartum depression. 10 to 20% of pregnant women will experience <clears throat> major depressive <clears throat> disorder in the postpartum period. That's a significant number. And of that, 30% have <clears throat> moderate to severe postpartum depression. And of the 20% that have depression, only 15% seek help. <laughs> I was going to ask so, about that because I know that with, with those statistics, there's always the question, are we missing people because they are not seeking treat, 